It's about social engineering, which is really using manipulation and deception to persuade people to either release proprietary information or to do some sort of action that allows the bad guys into the system or to gain information. So let me advance the slide here. Um, everybody remembers the quote by P.T. Barnum, right? There's a sucker born every minute. But that's really not why social engineering works. We're going to get, in a few moments, in, later in my presentation, I'm going to describe exactly why social engineering is so effective. But the information security industry, as probably all of you know, are really focused on technical solutions to the security problem. You, th you hear about firewalls, VPN, probably a lot of you, uh, when you're off-site, you have to VPN here in Toyota. I don't really know, but I, I can guess. And there's encryption, there's a biometric authentication devices, RSA is a company that develops, develops a secure ID device. And social engineering bypasses all of that because it goes directly to the human being. Because the bad guy is able to deceive anybody with legitimate access to give up the information or to transfer that information or to even reveal their credentials that allows them in. And the hackers and the industrial spies don't just focus on finding technical vulnerabilities. What they look for is the weakest link in the security chain. If they could walk into the company and plug in a wireless access device and hide it under somebody's desk, if they can get to the server room or the telephone closet, they're going to take the easiest route to get what they want. Of course, doing a physical entry is higher risk for the bad guys, and that is one of the reasons why social engineering is so widely used. And you think as the information security uh, community and these manufacturers that are developing security devices are making better and better technology to keep the bad guys out of your stuff, the more and more, excuse me, the more often that social engineering will be used, right? Because if it's the easier way in, that's the way the bad guy will take. Now, social engineering, excuse me one second. Social engineering exploits poor awareness because people aren't aware of the threat. They're not, uh, they're not aware of the value of information, that they're, they're not aware of the consequences of their actions. But social engineering also, does, also exploits not only poor awareness, but curiosity and poor security habits. Let me give you an example. And you notice on the floor there's a, a red three and a half inch floppy disk. You pick it up, it says extremely proprietary and confidential, payroll salary history for all executives and managers, 2000, first quarter 2003. I wonder what's on here, I wonder what, I wonder what my manager makes. Nobody will ever know. So they go back to their office or their cubicle, they plug it into their computer, the floppy, and it comes up with a Word doc or an Excel doc or any other type of file and it has you know, payroll salary history, they click on it. It doesn't come up, it says some sort of error message that the file could not open. So then they're a good Samaritan. They take this floppy and they turn it over to human resources. Somebody dropped this in a public place. This is sensitive, so they get that attaboy. Well, human resources is pulling out their hair because who was stupid enough to leave this information in the public area? So what they do is they put it in their computer and they do this exact same process. Well, what just happened? Anybody know? Trojan horse, okay? When they went to open that document, it installed spyware or a keystroke logger. So every keystroke that, person's type, that person types, every password they put in, every website they go to, every email they write and receive, every instant message they send is surreptitiously, <coughs> God, excuse me, I'm thirsty, so. Surreptitiously is sent out to some free email service provider like in the Ukraine or anywhere in the world. Or it could be a reverse back door, which, allow, which every so often your computer tries to connect to another computer that's on the internet, that's already been compromised by the same person or group of persons, and now the person's able to connect to your network because when you connect out to that compromised computer, it provides that hacker a reverse tunnel into your system. So that's one way that curiosity really can kill the cat. Let's go to the next slide. So why does social engineering work so well? Well, how many of you have ever received a telephone call asking for something that you think is like innocuous, is not really important? An employee number, another employee's uh, telephone extension, an address, something that's 
just that you, you, know, you normally give out in your, in your daily activities. Well, this is one of the main techniques of a social engineer, because what they do is they collect what appears to be innocuous information from different parts of the enterprise, and when they put it all together, it's valuable to them. Or, they, when they put it all together, they're able to build their credibility, because now they know as much as a true insider about a particular project, who's on vacation. People also underestimate the value of information, or if a person is working in a particular department and they know through gossip or because they go to the pub down the street and where all the employees hang out and they hear what other projects some other department is working on, they don't have any personal investment in the secrecy of that project. Maybe they even know it's sensitive, but it's, they don't have personal investment, so they're willing to talk about it or reveal that information to an outsider.